Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, for this video, I thought I'd show my process on how I go about mixing um, Copic markers. And I've come up with four different techniques. So first off, we're gonna start with the one I call Close Line Blend. Um, basically what you do, I have my little sample thing here so I can show you. Uh, find colors that are pretty similar to each other or same hue, I would say. Probably like this one, how it's just dark colors here. But all the other ones are pretty much in the same color family. So to start off, let's see. Let's try this green one right here. So we have this dark green here. And I'll leave all the things in the description down below. Like the numbers of the Copic markers and whatnot. Uh, so anyways... Basically, just simple line strokes like this. I start with the dark color first, then we'll move on to the mid color, like this. And then make sure to overlap this part. It might get a little too dark, but that's all right. Okay, now the light one. Go like this, overlap. And to make things easier, overlap everything with a light color. In that same motion. You see, as you can see, it's starting to blend. And that's how you do that. Okay, for the next one, I call this the circle blend. Basically, not really, this one didn't work that much, but if you want something that looks like that, you can go for it. It could work for something, I guess. Anyways, um, you can start with a light color in the middle or dark. It's easier, I think, with the dark color in the middle. But you do circular motions instead of just simple lines like what we were doing before. So let's show an example of that. We'll start with this blue one. Since my favorite color is blue. And I just love mixing the blues. Alright. So we got dark tone, mid tone, and a light tone. So we'll start with the dark tone, which will be this one, B29. Just make a small dot, well, almost kind of small. And then we'll start with the mid color, color, <laughs> color. Just go in a circular motion like that. And then with our light tone, same thing it at first and then overlap it a bit expand use our midtone again overlap the middle so it gets kind of blurry and then if you want the color in the middle to stand a little more add a little darker in there and then we'll go over everything again with the lightest color. And basically you just work it until it comes out the way you want it. So I probably would just add some more of the mid-tone here. And basically that's how it works. This one's a little darker. Ooh flat underneath. <laughs> a little darker than that, but basically the more pressure you put, the more the blend. 
Mm. Yeah, I would recommend putting something underneath these. And the paper that I'm using is a, what is it called? paper I'm using is called Canson. Looks like this. It's my favorite to use because I like to use a lot of mediums on stuff and it's a mixed media type of paper. So yeah, but for this, the more pressure you put, it's going to bleed onto the back. So I would recommend putting something underneath that you don't care about. Okay, for the next one, it's called the Color Blender. I mean, colorless blender, my bad. So for this one, you might want to get the Copic one, but since I don't have that, I'm just using the ones that I have, which are these Prismacolor colorless blenders. They work. But I would recommend the Copic ones to go with the Copics. Anyways, let's see. We'll go with this green and yellow one. Looks simple enough. So we we'll use two colors, but let's do a light color instead of the dark one. So for this one, do this. Same motion kind of before as with the close line blend, but we're adding the colorless blender to it. Put it next to it. And since these are light colors, you could probably just blend them. It's just more layers. So with color blender, it will make that part pretty light. And always make sure to clean your colorless blenders every time. Otherwise, you'll get the other colors that you used previously in there. Okay, so this. Just put it enough until it kind of turns the transparent color there. You can tell it just kind of like looks dead. To the color but then you just do the same thing as you were doing more yellow like this and there you go basically you just keep doing that until it's the, the blend you want And if you need to lighten it up more, you can always go back with the little spender. So that's that one. And for the last technique, I call this one the up and down blend. And where's my little thingy? Here it is. So for this one, it's just an up and down like I mentioned in the first um, technique. For this one, we'll use blue, purple, and black. Kind of like this one. That was a different color. That was a color called Gormant. Gormant, I think it's how you say it. All right, so we'll start with the bottom. So we'll use this purple, go up like this. We'll put blue at the top. Gotta keep doing it. Go like that. Where they barely touch in the middle. And then we need a color to help blend it in there. You wanna have like a completely different color in the middle to blend it all out. But the blue and the purple, pretty much in the same color family, so. They can blend easily. Then just go up and down like this. Up and down. Up and down. Go more pressure towards the middle where the other color is, which would be black. black to the center and there we 
have it. See, it blends in like that. Also, you can go side to side too, just the same way, but side to side instead of up and down. So that's how that works. So I had sketched out some little things here and I'll use the methods here that we I just talked about. Well guys, that's all I have to show about how I mix Copic markers. I hope it helped, and if you're interested to see what I have to offer as an artist, please feel free to subscribe and become a subscriber, or possibly give this video a like. Either or is greatly appreciated. And, as always, stay awesome guys. <laughs>